This short video is about the basic concepts of Rust, including variable declaration, variable mutability, scope, shadowing and ownership. Rust is a statically and strongly typed systems programming language. Statically means that all types are known at compile time. On the left is the famous Hello World program for beginner. Please note that println followed by an exclamation is not a function. It is a macro. Like functions, macros are a way of reducing the amount of code you have to write and maintain. However, macros can take a variable number of parameters. We use the keyword let to declare a variable. Here x is an integer. There are many types of integer. By default, x is i32. Here we show two ways of printing the x variable to the standard output, with a new line. We save the code as a text file with the suffix of .rs, namely, the file extension is rs. We use rustc to compile the program. Now we can see the executable in the same folder as the source code. Now we run the executable, like this. This is the result. Let's get back to our source code. Assigning to a underscore means, don't keep this thing around. If you compile this program, it will trigger a warning that the variable s is not used. Prefixing s with an underscore suppresses the warning. We declare three more variables. y is a 32-bit floating point number. By default, z is a 64-bit floating point number. b is a boolean. We output y, z, and b. Let's see how a constant is declared. Instead of the keyword let, the keyword const is used. A constant must be type annotated, can be scoped globally. This one is scoped locally. This outputs the constants. The integer types, floating point types and boolean type represent a single value. Let's have a look at the character data type. The char type represents a Unicode character and is 32 bits in size. You can create a char literal by using single quotes. A space inside single quotes is also a character. This is a character from some kind of language. We have more characters. You may need them. You can run the program. But I will skip it for now. Variable bindings are immutable by default. Here we define a variable x. Its initial value at the time of declaration is 5. Later we try to change the value to 6. The program does not compile. This is the error information cannot assign twice to immutable variable. This is the first assignment. This is the second assignment, which is not allowed for immutable variables. The compiler gives a suggestion. Back to the code. We follow the suggestion, adding the mute modifier. If you compile again, it will work. In Rust, as in many other programming languages, a code block contains a collection of statements enclosed by curly braces. Rust variables only live in a block where they are created. For example, variable y is declared in the code block indicated by the blue arrows, and beyond the scope, y is invalid. This means that you will have an error here if you compile this program. Let's try it. The error message reads, cannot find value y in this scope. The compiler gives a suggestion, a local variable with a similar name exists, x. The simplest solution is to remove this line of code. This time, the program will compile. Variable shadowing. Variable shadowing occurs when a variable declared within a certain scope has the same name as a variable declared in an outer scope. In this example, x is declared to be integer, 
by default it is I, 32. In the inner scope, a variable with the same name is declared to be a string, kind of. If you run the program, you will get results like this. This is another example of variable shadowing. As an exercise, please compile and run this program and see the result for yourself. Now let's focus on Rust ownership. When a program runs, it requires access to random access memory, which is not unlimited. If a program continues to consume memory without releasing it, it will eventually run out of memory and crash, potentially causing the operating system to crash as well. Therefore, it is crucial to free up memory when it is no longer in use. However, freeing memory while it is still being used by a variable can make the variable invalid and cause problems. Additionally, freeing memory twice can corrupt the memory management system and lead to serious issues. Many programming languages offer automatic memory management. As a beginner programmer, I found it challenging to understand the concept of memory management. Rust's ownership rules dictate how a Rust program manages memory, requiring that each value in Rust has one and only one owner. When the owner goes out of scope, the value will be dropped. In other words, the variable that owns the value is responsible for cleaning up the memory associated with the value when it goes out of scope. Let's start by looking at what happens when we declare a variable. As a beginner, it may seem like we're just writing code, but in reality, there are many things happening behind the scenes. In Rust, for most types, when a value is assigned to a variable, the variable takes ownership of the value. If we make changes to the code as shown, and then execute it, the resulting output values will be as follows. What happened? Are B and C pointing to the same value? Or is the value copied so that B and C are bound to new values? Let's make variables B and C mutable. Then assign new values to B and C. If we compile and run the code, data, B, and C have different values, suggesting that the values are independent of each other. In this example, the value owned by the variable, data, is copied and bound to variables, B, and C. Let's consider an example using different data types. This example is very similar to the previous one. Naturally, we assume that it would work in the same way. However, the code does not compile. We display the line number on the left. Remove comments. The general error info is given in the first line of the compiler message. Specifically, the error is reported on line 11. On line 10, the value of data is moved. So what is move in Rust? This binds the variable data to the string value. Please note the picture is highly schematic. The diagram shows the string value is copied and bound to the variable b. However, this did not happen. Instead, the variable b takes ownership of the string value previously bound to data. Each value can only have one owner, so when the ownership is transferred, the variable data becomes invalid. This transfer is often called at the move, and using invalid variables can cause errors. Let's consider this example. This time, we have a vector. Another example, a struct. Here is the definition of the struct. If we compile the code, we have errors, value used here after move. The compiler does not complain about the integer value. Why? How about using println instead of assignment? We need this, for formatted print. This time, we have the compile error value borrowed here after move. Here are the reasons. In Rust, some types are known as copy types because they are very simple. Their values are stored on the stack, and the compiler knows their size. 
When a value is assigned to a new variable or passed as an argument to a function, a copy of the value is created. These are examples of the copy type. The string, vector, and custom-defined struct types do not support copying. The only way to avoid violating the ownership rules is to transfer the ownership to the new variable. Thanks for watching.